Happy New Year and a warm welcome to the Racing Postcast brought to you by the Racing Post, sponsored by Unibet. Sam Hart in the hosting chair this week, taking you through the weekend action on ITV. I've got a fine panel of me, as always, to go through the four races from Wincanton and the four races from Newcastle. My Racing Post friends and colleagues, Robbie Wilders and Matt Gardner, and our friend from Unibet, Mr. Ed Nicholson. Ed, I'll start with you. A happy new year to you, but I just wanted to discuss what a shame it is that we lose the Unibet card at Sand. I'm really looking forward to the veterans, but not to be this time around. Yeah, happy new year to everyone. It's unhappy new year for me with the uh, <laughs> the race being cancelled, the whole meeting being cancelled. We've been sponsoring that race at Sandown since 2018. It's always a great occasion. Uh, always a good number of people at the race course as well. Um, so it's, it's particularly disappointing given the you know the racing was set fair for a wonderful field of horses, not just for the veterans chase sponsored by Univet, but the whole the whole card. So yeah, not not the best start to the day. Let's let's put it that way. No, but we've still got races to bring in, hopefully, plenty of winners. I'm going to get straight into it this week because there are plenty of races to go through. And we start off at Wincanton with the 130 there. This is a handicap chase just shy of two miles, a class three event where Unibet have Artemis Kimbo as the 5 2 favourite. Fast Buck is 3 to 1. Magic Saint, 7 to 2. Prince Carly, 6 to 1. Mr. Grey Sky is 13 to 2. And Fakir, the outsider of the six, at 15 to 2. Robbie Wilders, I'm going to let you kick off the show this week. Who's going to win this one? Cheers, mate. Um, I think Magic Saint has a pretty good chance here. Um, I mean, he's off 125. We've not seen him in quite a while, but you'd have to go back too far, and he was actually rated 152. Um, he ran a good race behind Editor de Geek just back in November 2021 off that mark. That's like £27 lower. Uh, he's going to like the ground. Paul Nichols has a really good record with Canton, so I think he could be a, a winner to kick us off. Absolutely, yeah. Paul Nichols has a superb record at Wincanton. I think there could be a few multiples with his horses in this weekend. Matt Gardner, happy new year to you. Who's going to win the uh, the 130 at Wincanton? Yeah, um, I, I didn't really have a strong view on this, to be honest. I think the strongest... It, it, it's really, I thought it was really easy to pick holes in all of them. Um, mm. Maybe Prince Carly was, was the one I'd side with just because... On his French form, he can make him look well treated. He could be a sort of mid one twenty horse on on a positive reading of that. Um, the slight niggle with him is that he generally wore a tongue tie in France, and he hasn't worn that. He didn't wear that on his stable debut. He's not wearing that this weekend either. So whether he's going to be kind of ripe or not, I'm not sure. But I didn't really fancy any of the others. So uh, a tentative uh, selection with Prince Carly, I think. Yeah, this was a race that was added to the Wincanton card, I believe, by ITV4 this weekend. So a late one in, but Prince Carly currently 6-1 to one with Unibet. Ed Nicholson, who's going to win our opener race on the postcast? Well, it's a competitive race, 2.5 to 1 to uh, to 7.5 to 1, covers the whole field. Um, mm. I was in agreement with uh, Magic Saint, funnily enough. He's got a great record, as we all know, Paul Nichols. Um, out of all the tracks in the UK, he's got the best number of wins for two mark for handicap chases at uh, Wincanton. 81 winners during this century alone. And uh, last year at Wincanton, if you backed every single one of his horses in handicap chases, you would have been 30 quid up on a level state profit. So we all know he loves Wincanton. Magic Saint has never raced in any grade lower than a grade two over a handicap. Uh, ran in a couple of hunters chases, but uh, this will be his first time in a handicap company outside of class two. Um, and you, you know, you've got to forgive a pulled up effort last time. Um, he may need the run. His form isn't great on heavy going, but he's won twice out of three at Wincanton. And I just thought that the price is um, a speculative bet on, on Magic Saint from a trainer we know loves having a winner at Wincanton. Absolutely. Two votes for Magic Saint then at 7-2 currently with Unibet and one vote from Matt for Prince Carly, but a tentative one at that. We move on to the 205 then, which is a handicap hurdle just shy of two miles here, a Class 5 event, where Four of a Kind is currently 3-1 to favourite. Fiek Amak is 7-2. to One last glance, 11-2. to Mini Yates is 15-2. to Darnie is 15-2. to Angel's Dream, 9-1. to And double figures bar these. And Ed Nicholson, this is our money back if second or third in this race I think that's live from 9am on Saturday morning so it's not live yet but from 9am Saturday morning money back if second or third and terms apply is that right that's right yeah please do check the website for full details of that offer but it's a great offer to have for this particular race 
Um, it will be a competitive handicap hurdle in the betting as well as on paper. Um, and it's quite a difficult one to fathom. Mm-hmm. Um, I have no strong opinion in this race. It's a 0-105. Um, four of a kind was the one that I was interested in. It's the top end of the market. Most likely winner, I think. Um, I was going to hopefully say that it, hopefully for a four of a kind for trainer Harry Durham because his last three winners have been winners. Mm. But he's got a runner that runs earlier on in the day at Southwark. So that <laughs> kind of m- m- mucks that one up. But um, he's been great form, the trainer, as we know. Um, uh, Paul O'Brien, another jockey. Who's, who's, he's so underrated by a lot of people. He's a very good jockey. He's had uh, 15 winners this season, I think, um, which he needs one more to, for it to be the second best um record of of his career uh and he could get it on four of a kind who's who's got good form if you go back to ascot he ran really uh okay in a grade two event um but it is a poor event in in relative terms and you know anything could win so this offers pre- pretty good to give to customers today uh, money back second third as cash uh in this particular race but four of a kind will be my my tentative selection Four of a kind, yeah, you get that insurance of the money back if second or third. That is live from 9am tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, and you do check the terms and conditions for that one there. Matt, who have you got in this open-looking contest? Uh, I fancied one last glance. Um, he, If you go back to Fontwell 2022, he split a couple of horses that are now rated in the mid-130s, and he wasn't beaten. I think he was only beaten about a length. It wasn't like one of those where they came home at wide margins and he just sort of fell into second. Um, he was off. 600 plus days ran at exeter in november ran a cracker uh, they're giving him plenty of time to get over that he's got boy morgan taken over who i think is pretty good value for that five pounds um it is pretty open and he, he kind of taking a chance that he's going to go the right way from that but yeah i thought one last one last glance had uh, had a good chance okay one last glance for matt and robbie wilders who for you Oh uh, yeah, just going to piggyback on what Ed said. Really, uh, four of a kind. I mean, Harry Durham is a, a trainer, obviously going places as we know. He's he's had six winners from his last ten, and there is a piece of form here which makes four of a kind quite well treated off Mark Under and Two. He wasn't beaten far by under control. He went on favourite for the Jerry Field, and he's rated in the high one thirties now. Uh, that was a few starts back. He's had issues recently, but I backed Durham to eventually get to the bottom of him. I think he's going to be well handicapped at some point, and he might well show it tomorrow. There we go. Once again, Ed and Robbie in agreement, but Matt's having none of it and goes off on his own uh, with one last class. That's how it is. That's how it is. Let's see if we get agreement in the 240 then. The handicap chase over two and a half miles, a class three event where George's Saint is currently the 5 2 favourite. Huel Goat is 3 to 1. Jackamar, 5 to 1. Go Steady is 6 to 1. Iconic Muddle, 13 to 2. Dibble Decker is 9 to 1. Honor Darjonk is 14 to 1. Matt, I'll let you kick things off here. Venetia's horses are in flying form and they have been since the start of the season. Could you bag a winner here? Yeah, I thought I thought Georgia Saint was just really solid. Um, and I, I wasn't that keen on Heel Goat, to be honest. Yeah, I, you could argue that the Nichols horse, if he was coming here on the back of that course and distance win, he'd be a bit tighter in the bedding. Um, he didn't get home last time, but he is a horse that's kind of finished his, his races quite weakly before, whereas Georgia Saint... It's just really solid, handles the testing ground really well. Um, yeah, he, he ticked all the right boxes for me. Okay, yeah, George is Saint. Robbie Wilder, is George is Saint for you? Yeah, I think so. I think he'll go is plenty short, really. I mean, you go through his profile, he's not, there's no real suggestion that he handles this sort of ground. He's got, he, he really struggled on it badly at Sandown last time. He's got form figures of 6, 8, 6, 8 on it. Uh, all of his six switches are cover much quicker surfaces, so I think his price is more down to Nichols' record and the sort of weakness of the rest of them. So I think George's Saint is uh, probably a good thing here, to be honest. He's he's just improving all the time. He's going to love the surface, lightly raced novice. I think he just wins. When the mud is flying, go with Venetia's. And is that the way you look at it, Ed? I always think he's got a favourite chance. Um, probably be backed as well, I think, um, come the day. But I'm just going to go for Jackamar who's got a good course form, came second on Boxing Day at Wincanton. Um, his form at Wincanton is 2 2 three, one, one. He does love the track. He can't win going left-handed. He's two from 26, but this track is perfect for him. Um, as I say, ran well last time. This distance will suit him. Um, I thought he's worth a chance on a track that he obviously goes well at. He'd be about third or fourth favourite, I would have thought, about five to one, six to one. 
Yeah, good old Jack and Mark currently 5-1 to one with Unibet for the 240 there at Wincanton. Now, the final race we look at from Wincanton is the 315, a handicap hurdle, class 3 event, over 2 mile, 5.5 furlongs, an individual east for the Paul Nichols team, tops the market currently with Unibet at 7-4. to four. Intimate is 130, Astronomic View is 4-1, to one. Don't Rightly Know is 7-1, to one. Rare Clouds is 10-1, to one. Bumpy Johnson's 11-1, to one. and Bigger about the rest in the field. Field Ed Nicholson, who's winning this one? I think the favourite wins, um, not just because of his form, but the form of the others. I don't think kind of holds a candle, and he's likely to improve. He didn't actually beat much at Taunton. Um, he won very well uh, by 16 lengths, if I remember rightly. Um, and obviously, a lightly raised six-year-old with Paul Nichols running at Wing Canton in a handicap hurdle. Yeah, you'd be mm. mad not to be with him. I just thought he was just a, one step ahead of the handicapper and likely to improve. Freddie's taking off, Freddie Gingle's taking off three pounds as well. Um, so that would be the one that ran about two to one, 15 to eight for me. Freddie Gingle's a hell of a jockey, he really is, and, and one to definitely keep an eye on. Well, he has been since the start of the season, but definitely throughout this year. Matt, who for you in this one here? Uh, I, I liked Intimate. I thought Individual East was was plenty short enough. I acknowledge that he, you know, he, he probably is going to be capable of better, but the the form doesn't look up to much. You kind of bet him more on that potential than than the form in the book. Um, Intimate's just a horse that's like improving in chunks over hurdles. He's stepping up in trip, which is definitely going to suit. As you mentioned a, a couple of minutes ago, the yards flying. So, mm. um, yeah, I'd, I'd be I'd be keen to go with him over the fab. Okay, right. So two. Well, it's a vote for the two at the top of the market. One for individual east and one for intimate. Who's it going to be, Rob? Is it one of those two? Uh, no. Yeah, I, I think individual east is a little bit shorter. I think that there are a few here with claims. Um, Astronomic View has been very consistent lately. He's got a chance, but I thought the at the earlier price I've had a bet on. Don't rightly know. I thought uh, she was a bit too big. Um, she should be coming here seeking a hat trick. She threw a race away here last time. She just hung badly across the track, hit 1.03 and running, got done by a neck. I think she's reading a little bit differently. I think she's on a good mark around cap debut, 117. She's probably been a bit underestimated at the early odds, I'd say. And she might be nine, but she's actually the least exposed runner in the field. I think she's got quite a nice profile, to be honest. Don't rightly know. Okay, don't rightly know. Currently 7-1 to one. wouldn't be a bad each way bet in this handicap hurdle. And that's the last race that we cover from Wincanton. We're going to be looking at Newcastle. Before then, here's what you can get from Unibet in the new year. Want betting on the horses to be anything but flat. With an app that impresses every time out. You're on. Want to watch live streaming of races in the UK, Ireland and around the globe? You get a chance to win even bigger with three uni boosts every day on any horses you want. Uni bet. You're on. Welcome back to the second part of the Racing Postcast, brought to you by the Racing Post, sponsored by Unibet, Sam Hart, Matt Gardner, Robbie Wilders and Unibet's Ed Nicholson, spinning you through the weekend's action. Now, Newcastle has been added to the ITV schedule, four races from there, and we kick off with the 140, which is a novice's hurdle over two mile, one furlong. This is a class four event. And two old pals is topping the market at five to four, currently with Unibet. Forge Well is three to one. Luna Chief, six to one. Confusion is 17 to two. And Amanda is 14 to one, 16 to one. And bigger about the rest of the field here. The first novice's hurdle we look at on the postcast this week. Ed, I'll go with you. Who's going to win this? Well, not much form to go on obviously being a novice hurdle, but um, the top two in the market would seem to have it between them based upon what we've seen um, so far. But also that's uh, one, or, one or two of them have had OK flat careers as well. And one of those is the favourite two old pals who's had 21 races in total in his career, but um, all but uh, one of them has been on the on the flat where he was rated 70 uh, with Jim Goldie and put in some good performances, including on, on heavy ground and softish ground. He won uh, for Jim Goldie at uh, Chester, I think it was, um, on, on heavy ground uh, in a handicap. And he put in a good performance um, on his hurdling debut. Uh, Banger, well, he did take a keen hold. He, he really hit the last hurdle as well, um, but ran on quite well uh, behind a decent horse in Classic Lord. 
uh, with one or two in behind who we actually will speak about later on in the in the postcast. Um, so I, I put that down as a, as a fair introduction. Uh, the speed rating that I have was was fair, was good relative to this particular kind of contest at Newcastle. Um, he is short though, eleven to ten. That's mm-hmm. the only thing. Um, Forge well did go particularly well when winning at Carlisle over I think it was over further wasn't it so he's dropping down in trip um but he looked he looked like a horse that could 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 progress um as, as well um but it does have to give seven pounds to two old pals and that's what swayed me for the favorite but um yeah it'd be interesting to see how these two get on but it's uh it's, it's 10 to 1 bar these two so it, it looks like it's between the front two and, and my, my vote goes for the favorite two old pals yeah, to our pals, the money is certainly coming for the Lucinda Russell runner here. Robbie Wilders, is it between those top two at the top of the market? Yeah, I would have thought so, mate. I mean, they have the standout form in the book. Uh, I was hoping hoping for a slightly bigger price about two old pals, but yeah, he's definitely the right favourite. Um, used to when me and Rodders used to do the RPRs to the stairs, we used to handicap two old pals quite a bit, and uh, yeah, he's quite an interesting jumper for Lucinda Russell to have on her books now. I think there was a, enough encouragement in that banger run over hurdles in December. Should come on for it and get him £7 from Falls Well, so that could make all the difference. OK, two votes for two old pals. And Matt Gardner, is it going to be a free-timer? Yeah, make it three, I think. He's, he's not the sort of horse you'd normally be... Well, you'd normally be looking to get a horse like him beat at sort of 11 to 10, but there's not really much against him. And uh like rob said he was a he was a mid-70s horse i think on the flat on on race and post ratings and and that's going to give him a fair bit of scope um mm. to improve on that hurdling debut form and and the slightly greater test that he's got here it's an extra furlong a bit more of a galloping track that's probably going to suit him so um yeah unoriginal but he, he should take plenty of beating okay a hat trick there for two old pals in the first race we cover from newcastle the 215 is also a novices hurdle this time a class four event over two and a half miles where hand stands a really short price favourite here, three to one on currently. Rocksteady Eddie's nine to one. Baltimore Classic is ten to one. Taras Halls is also ten to one. Hubble Bubble eleven to one. Raffles Wonder twelve to one, and much bigger about the rest of the field. We can keep this fairly well quick unless anyone's got a differing opinion. But Matt, favourite should win this. I was quite impressed by this horse actually. Yeah, his miles clear on the figures, wasn't he? Impressive at Hereford. Um, yeah, he, he should win. The the only other one I'd give a maybe, maybe just a note to is Tara's Halls, um, who didn't get very far in his hurdling debut at Weatherby. Um, I was there that day, and he's a he's a really good sort physically. Um, he looks a bit of a plodder at Market Raisin last time, but he's got a good bumper form. He might be one for handicaps after this run, so he might just be one to stick in your tracker. But um, yeah, you'd expect handstands to win. Okay, your hand stands. There's the first vote. Ed, second vote. Yeah, yeah. Cost connection is one hundred thirty-five thousand. Um, so quite expensive. Uh, that performance at uh, Hereford. That race was won by Paisley Park in two thousand and seventeen. I noted. Mm. Um, so not that it gives any relevance to the chance of handstands winning this race, but um, yeah, it should win. Yeah, absolutely. And Robbie, complete the hat trick. Yeah, I'm going to, mate. I mean, I have nothing else to add apart from the fact that he's £33 clear on adjusted RPRs. <laughs> so I think he should probably win. Should win, but way too short there. Three to one on currently. Let's move on to a race that certainly is a lot more competitive. The 250 is a handicap chase over two and a half miles, a Class 5 event where Empty Nest is currently your 5-2 to two favourite with Unibet. Cool Kill is 9-2. to two. Uh, good old Bill is nine to two. Attention all is seven to one. Unmem Tomp is seven to one. Carrigan Castle eight to one. Great Raffles seventeen to two. And double figures and bigger about the rest of them. Uh, Robbie, go on. I'll let you start here. There's got to be a, a competitive uh, big selection here, isn't there? Tough day, isn't it? This is a Richard Birch <laughs> day. If ever I've seen one. Um, the, the one I would be back in if I had a bet. I probably won't have a bet in it. But it's good old Bill. Uh, one we just got up in the nick of time at Newcastle here last time. Uh, drops down in trip. That should be OK. He's been rated £14 higher in the past and he's still pretty lightly raced. Uh, it's a tricky race. Good old Bill for me, just about. Good old Bill for Robbie. Ed Nicholson, who for you? It's a really difficult race. Um, I'm just going to take a chance with uh, attention all. The top weight here. Um, fifth uh, last time out on his chase debut. He's only had four runs over hurdles. Uh, that was first time out of offences in a handicap, which suggests that Rebecca Menzies thinks he might be well handicapped still. 
interestingly drops down to 98 which means he gets into this 0 to 100 off top weight been running in better classes um i, I just thought it's worth a chance the stable seen relatively good form and, and and likes to have a winner up at newcastle as we know they like to have winners all over the place but newcastle they go particularly well at um and i thought it was quite interesting at the price um possibly each way uh seven eight to one um worth worth a bit of a go given that it's now rated 98 um but it's a really difficult race wouldn't put off many people back in anything in this race actually yeah it is it's such a tough race to call and uh matt i'm probably guessing you found that as well yeah, yeah, I'm I'm with attention all actually. I thought he was he was pretty interested in this. Um, that hurdles form, you can make him look well treated off 98. He he sort of went the wrong way over hurdles. Um, it was quite a promising right, uh, performance when he won here. Um, he was given a, a considerate introduction to fences. I think we could say in that naught to 120, um, dropping down in grade, back up in trip. I think it's really going to suit. Um, this will be easier, um, and if he goes the right way from that, then yeah, sort of anything around the seven to one mark is is pretty interesting. And there we go. Attention all. Two votes for this horse currently seven to one for the two fifty there at Newcastle. The final race at Newcastle, and the final race we cover on this week's postcast is the three twenty five, a handicap hurdle, a class five event over two and a half miles, where Yearland is currently the two to one favourite. Tommy Johnson and Robert Dawes seven to two. Then we've got a jump to ten to one for Amber Gold, eleven to one Scalloway Boy, twelve to one about Wild Polly at Glory Heights, and sixteen to one. Bar these final tip from the ITV action. I'll go to Ed. Who's winning this? Uh, competitive race again. Although the favourite's relatively short at nine to four, and is my selection, Yeeland. Um, I thought it was quite a competitive race. Uh, Yeeland's only had three runs. Um, I was at Chepstow when he made his debut second uh, to a, a decent sort, fair sorts, rated ninety nine Imperial J, but hasn't had much racing um, and ran quite well. Um, last time out as well, speed figures that I've got that I've read suggest that it's got, you know, is there or thereabouts for a race of this type at Newcastle? Um, it's short at nine to four. If you're betting for value, you probably wouldn't want to take nine to four. But I thought he probably was the most likely winner, and his form links into the horse we mentioned at the beginning, uh, two old pals who we all went mm. for in, in that race. He was behind that horse at, at Bangor uh, recently. So yeah, three runs handicap, got a rating of 96. Thought worth worth a go. Just a bit disappointed with the price. Yeah, well, look, the price is what it is. Currently around 9 to 4 with Unibet. But, Ed, this is our Super Boost race, isn't it? So, from 9am tomorrow, what can punters get? Yeah, well, the Super Boost, for those of you that don't don't know or haven't listened to the racing post postcast before, it's a race where you choose the horse that you want to be boosted. Um, we do one race or two races uh, a day. And all the horses in this in this card uh, in this race will be boosted to the next price up the ladder. So, for example, if Yaelan went off at nine to four, you'd get five to two. Um, if you fancied Amber Gold and he went off ten to one, it'd be eleven to one. So every horse is the next price up, which obviously reduces the margin on the overall race, which is good for punters. Um, and then the other thing we do, which is a uni boost, is where. Um, you also can choose the horse that you wanted to boost uh, in any race. So every horse in this race will be boosted to the next price up. So you choose which one you want. Uh, and a unit boost is a price where you choose one horse that you want to boost throughout the course of the day. There we go. So if you do want to boost on this race, there it is. The Super Boost available from 9am Saturday morning. Robbie Wild is the final race at Newcastle. Who wins it? Um... Robert Dorez wins it, I reckon, for George Bewley. Um, he certainly would have won at Hexham last time if he didn't unseat two out. Uh, he was two links clear, going best. Uh, quite unlucky there. Drops back down in trip. That should be fine. Um, I think he's probably on a on a mark. He can win off of 80 or just one pound higher. And I quite rate George Bewley. I think he's a slightly underrated trainer. So Robert Dorez will do me. Okay, Robert Dorez for Robbie Wilders and Matt Garner finishes off with a winner. Yeah, I'd be with Yelland as well. He he hasn't exactly been missed, has he? But he's a pretty obvious kind of like handicap sort of job. He, he dropped back in trip last time for his qualifying run. He definitely wants this sort of trip. You'd hope that he's better than a mid-90s horse. And um, if he is, then that 90, 9 to 4 could actually look, look reasonable value afterwards. Absolutely, I can completely agree. I think 9 to 4 could be a good price. About the favourite. So there we go, all the ITV action sewn up. Really nice pace that, fellas. Really enjoyed that. But before then, all of our features for Members Club are now available on the Racing Post app. Have a look at this. 
Members Club is now available on the Racing Post app. All Members Club subscribers can now access premium news and tips anytime, anywhere. Plus, if you're not already a member, you'll get 50% off your first three months. If you haven't already subscribed yet and want to join the greatest club in racing, simply visit racingpost.com forward slash subscribe. Welcome back to the final part of the Racing Postcast. Sam Hart, Robbie Wilders, Matt Gardner and Ed Nicholson taking you through the weekend action. We now get in to the final part of the show where we look at any other selections for the weekend. Really popular last week in the comments. You guys loved it on YouTube. Johnny Pearson putting up plenty of winners and surprise, surprise, I put a winner up in the Quebec Stakes at Lingfield with Tyrene and C who did it in really good style. So hopefully we can get some good selections this weekend. We've got Nace on Sunday. The two o'clock there is the grade one, the Lords of Nace Novice Hurdle, over two and a half miles. Robbie, I'll just come to you because it is a, a top quality field. Yeah, it is. It is indeed. Uh, it's definitely one to watch. I mean, over the last few years, we've had Bob Ollinger win it and Envoy Allen and have come out and won the Ballymore after. So it's going to have uh, going to have a r some ramifications on the Cheltenham Festival. Um, I think Firefox is probably the one to beat. He accounted for Ballyburn in good style at Ferry House over, Chris, over in December. Sorry, and Ballyburn came out and won by miles of leopards down. Yeah. He's now the favourite for the Ballymore. So that's going to be an interesting one to watch. I just about started with him, but Il Atlantique for Willie Mullins looked a little bit special on his debut as well. So it's going to be interesting, that's for sure. I don't think you want to miss it. Yeah, it's a hell of a race. Looking forward to that two o'clock on Sunday. It's going to have, like Robbie said, some implications to the Cheltenham anti-post markets. Ed, it's going to have that, that big implication, but there's plenty of news about Cheltenham anti-post via Unibet. Yeah, Unibet's anti-post uh, is, is, is really pretty decent. We, we price up as many events as we can um, in the future. Uh, I know all firms do that, but our, our guys actually take quite a lot of pride in, in, in what they do. And they've priced up all the um, all the Cheltenham Festival races. And the handicaps are now five places. If you want to back anti-post each way, the, all the handicaps at the Cheltenham Festival are five places. And, and we've I think we've got more runners priced up for the Cheltenham races than it any other bookmaker so if you can't see a horse that you want to back in any of the Cheltenham races do get onto our Twitter account at, at race at Unibet Racing so at Unibet Racing we watch that and we then ask our traders to price up for any person that wants a price uh, on, a, on a horse in a particular race um, and they can they can bet with that at, at Unibet um, so yeah good good weekend as it always is these days obviously Sandown being off is a disappointment for mm. a few Cheltenham pointers but there'll always be pointers at, in Ireland weren't there on Sunday and uh, again this Sunday Day, some good horses in action yeah plenty of action even though we've lost a, a great meeting at sand and there is some good action to look forward to this weekend and matt i'll come to you there's good action on sunday from plumpton as well we've got the sussex national down at plumpton this sunday and what else have you got yeah a couple others to watch for the weekend one in the sussex national uh foxborough uh i quite fancy he He's had got a lot of racing, but he 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 improved for his first run over a marathon trip at Exeter. He won by twenty odd lengths. It sort of fell apart, and they didn't jump that many fences because of the low sun. I don't think, but Handicap has taken a chance by sticking him up only five. Um, if he's as good as that look, then then he should run really well. Um, and then one on the flat, five thirty at Solidal on Saturday. Billy Webster, um, a three year old that I was properly impressed with on Handicap debut last time. Forms worked out really well. The second and third went on to finish 1-2 the time after. Um, he just looked really progressive. Um, and, yeah, I think he'll take plenty of beating as well. There we go. A couple to look out for this weekend. Now it's time to end the show with one of, well, people's favourite part of the show. It's time to get the naps for the weekend. You're going to get four selections here. These will all be boosted from the time this show is uploaded. So all of our naps will be boosted. So hopefully we can have plenty of winners, gentlemen. And Matt, I'll start with you. Who's going to be the best bet this weekend? I really liked one last glance in, uh, is it 205 at Wincanton, I think it was? Um, was pretty keen to take on four of a kind, and uh, yeah, I, I thought he was he was overpriced. Okay, one last glance and two o five at Wing Canton for Matt Robbie. Who for you? Uh, two forty at Wing Canton. George's Saint for me, Sam. George's Saint for Robbie Wilders. I'm going to go to a, actually a uni bet card at Kempton on the All Weather on Saturday. The seven fifteen there is a six furlong. It's the uni bet extra place offers every day handicap. Part of the London Sprint Series qualifiers, and I really like Brazen Idol in this. I was torn behind the two course and distance winners towards the top of the market, Tiger Bay and Brazen Idol. Tiger Bay beat Brazen Idol last time out of Wolverhampton, but 
Brazen Isle this time well, I was better off at the weights and I just think that this horse here is going to love Kempton. I mean, he's only been to Kempton once and has won here. So I've got a feeling with Aidan Keeley on board, we're going to see a really impressive display. The draw was against Brazen Idol the last day. Tiger Bay had the better draw. This time around, it's a little bit more in favour of Brazen Idol. I think if you can get anywhere around sort of the 5, 6 to 1 mark, I'd be very, very keen with the John Butler runner in the 7.15 at Kempton. And Ed Nicholson, who for you? Going to go for Jack Ma in the uh, the race at Wincanton, uh, the 240. Got a great Wincanton record. He's won a couple of times, been placed on three occasions. Uh, ran really well last time at the course uh, on Boxing Day. And I think he's got a really good chance given the, the relative competitiveness of the race, given the other uh, options available. So Jack Ma is going to be my, my nap of the week. There we go, Jack Ma. You can see all of our selections and our naps on screen there now. These are boosted, Ed, aren't they, from the time of upload? Yeah, they are. For, all the naps are boosted directly when the uh, the postcast comes. Now, I should also mention, we, we spoke about the race in Ireland. That's a super boost race on Sunday. Mm. Uh, and also, the, uh, the the Sussex National is a super boost race. So you can get your next price up on the price ladder for both those races. And the money back race on Sunday at Plumpton is the uh, the 2.15, with the likes of Call Me Lord likely to be to be running in that, in that handicap stayers hurdle. Um, so plenty of offers on place. And talking about extra places, you've had a bet of your nap in the extra place race at Kempton. We've got extra place races on Sunday as well at Nace in the 3.10 and uh, Plumpton the 3.35 and six races at Wolverhampton, all with extra place options available uh, with them. There you go. Plenty of offers. Do check out unibet.co.uk to see all of those offers. Uh, let's find out what everyone's up to this weekend. Ed, I'll start with you because I was meant to be seeing you on Saturday. We were meant to be at... Sandown Racecourse, looking forward to a race that was actually, there was the opening race was named after the racing postcast, but we're not going to see that now. What are the plans instead? Well, I was really looking forward to you to presenting the trophy, and I got one that kind of was up and bottom, where if you, if you didn't hold the top, it fell off. And I wasn't <laughs> going to tell you, because I thought you'd make great content, um, but alas, we can't do that. I don't actually know what I'm doing this weekend. I was supposed to be at Sandown tomorrow and Chepstow on Sunday, and both those meetings have been called off. So um, I'll just see how it goes. I'll probably watch the racing in the comfort of the house and uh, and see and see what happens. I'll also be looking at, at Unibet Racing, because we've given the racings off at Sandown. Uh, we've spoken to Nicky Henderson. We asked um, viewers, uh, uh, readers of the Twitter account to ask questions to Nicky. And uh, we've actually put those questions directly from from, uh, from readers of the Twitter account to Nicky. And that's being typed up as we speak. So if you want to know what Nicky thinks of all his runners uh, and rate and questions that have been asked by people that, that follow us on Twitter, then that will be up uh, by about seven o'clock tonight. OK, looking forward to reading that. So, yeah, do follow Unibet so you can have a look through that and see what Nicky S says about all of your questions. Matt Gardner, what are you up to this weekend? Um, I think it's forecast drive tomorrow, so I'm hoping to get out on the bike. I'm just yeah, coming out. Seven I've had the... to four on that was, Matt. Seven yeah, to four on that you were going to be on I'm your right. bike. I've had the lurgy, but I'm, I'm coming out of it, I think, so I should be all right tomorrow. <laughs> OK, so Matt's on his bike and Robbie Wilders, who knows what you're up to tomorrow? Yeah, I'll be on the uh, the stepper. That's my form of cardio, the stepper <laughs> machine. I'll be on that. I, I haven't done much cardio in a while since before Christmas. And I'll be watching Chelsea Preston in the FA Cup at half five on Saturday. That's about it, mate. Of course, FA Cup action you? as well. Tomorrow. And I would have I would have liked to have seen you present that trophy uh, on Santa. That'd have been quite funny. It sounded like Ed had a video <laughs> plan where he was going to film that. Yeah. The trophy was going to fall to pieces, and then that was going to be part of next week's show. But unfortunately, that's not going to be the case. Um, I once, I, I once, uh, when we sponsored the, uh, the a big, a big race, the uh, the King George, I think it was, uh, Lawrence Delalio was that was was presenting the trophy, and I remember saying something ridiculous like, "Be careful when you when you when you lift the trophy because the top comes off." And he goes, "I have handled a few trophies in my career." <laughs> <Aaron>. <laughs> he, said smi- he said it with a smile. He said it with a smile on his face. Uh, there we go. Well, fun. yeah. Luckily, it didn't happen to me. So we're waiting. We're, we're He's waiting. a Chelsea boy as well, Delalio. So. He is. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I don't know what I'm up to tomorrow. I'll be watching the racing, but I may be tempted. I mean, I'm not too far away from Plumpton, so I might be tempted to head to Plumpton on Sunday, weather dependent. So that's it for this week's show. Big thanks to Ed, Matt and Robbie as always. We're going to be back at the normal time. We're back to reverting to Thursdays at 7pm for the upload of the racing postcast from next week. So do look out for that. As always, do like, share, subscribe. Get the comments in down below. Let us know you're enjoying the show and get your naps in in the comments. I'll read as many as possible and we will see you again next weekend. Thanks for watching.